last time's class. Uh, one of the Iratha, the, the most serious one was the problem that Lognaga pointed out. Uh, and the problem was that we didn't know that the Iratha, normally polyrogal was n minus 4 and n d 6 and uh, trace r2 to the 6. And uh, Lognaga's point was that, uh, well, all the gravitational terms in the anomaly polynomial uh, should have an aim in them. Uh, but there were, other, there were other terms, there was trace R2 squared, trace R4, trace R2 uh, uh, cube, and where is that gone? And the answer is that I was blindly copied out the, uh, the uh, formula from Wojcicki's textbook. Wojcicki's textbook has a, a typo. This is completed with. Uh, it's wherever it is from from a single i h. So uh, yeah. Uh, seven two five seven zero. Okay. There are the other terms with relative coefficients that you can figure out from twelve points. Okay. This is the new edition has a text. Plus seven two five seven six zero plus uh, trace r two squared trace r two to the fourth divided by five five two nine six zero plus trace r two squared uh, cube over and if you look at your notes or equations 12.2.11 uh, in Polchinski, you'll say the same denominators in I8. So all of these numbers come from I8. Okay, so, uh, so, so that, that was the uh, that was the first comment. Okay, so everything else was right as far as I mean. No, just that there were other terms here, uh, which accounts for this, this, this problem. Okay, anyway, the second thing that I wanted to, I wanted to discuss was to answer another question of Lognagam's uh, uh, in the previous class. And uh, his question was, uh, uh, if B transforms in this one way, how does it affect the coupling of B to the string? Okay. This question is harder to answer when, uh, when it couples to a D-string, as in the case of type 1 theory. But in the heterotic theory, uh, in the heterotic theory, B couples to a fundamental string. So one should be able to, and since we understand from Quetchit by equation theory, the coupling of every field to a fundamental string, one should be able to see this funny behavior, this funny transformation of B directly to Quetchit analysis. Okay, and I'll indicate how here. Okay. Now, you remember that the heterotic theory um, has left moving lambda a's. Well, the left and the right, doesn't matter. Um, these lambda a's that live only on the left, let's say the left moving sector. So we're working with relations in which the left moving sector is bosonic, the right moving sector is superstring, and there were uh, uh, these lambda a's, there were uh, 32 of them, lambda a's, uh, on the bosonic side, giving you the sectoral charge 16. Okay, uh, just for definiteness, let's work with the SO32 theory. Okay, so uh, uh, in this theory, we got uh, uh, we got our adjoint fields from lambda a, lambda b, lambda a, lambda b with fermions. We got our adjoint fields from this on the left, and then, then new x or sine theta dimensions we use on the right. Those gave us the gauge fields, which were the adjoint of SO32. Okay, so you see, this A index here, um, and you see this has been more calculations with the entropic string, but it's intuitively clear that this A index is an index in the vector of SO32. Because anti symmetrizing it gives you the attribute. Okay, so it's intuitively clear that these fermions here are. Uh, uh, in the internal indices should transform under SO32 representations. Okay, so now let's try to write down the action for the string in a background that has a non-trivial A. 
This A field is the A field of esoteric. Okay? Uh, at some point, when we start studying sigma models, uh, we should have done that long ago, but at some point, I'll give you a systematic presentation of this. But at this point, we won't aim for that systematicity. Just we'll guess it. Okay? So the guess is sort of very clear. You see, what we want is uh, uh, to, the, the A should couple covariantly to A, to, to, uh, to, uh, to lambda. You know, so derivative should be replaced by covariant derivatives. So we want the derivative of this lambda to be such that it is invariant under H. So how do we achieve that? Okay, that's achieved very simply. Uh, it's achieved by. Uh, just to get the factors straight, it's achieved by del z bar, for instance, of, of lambda. This is the, oh, in the free action we would have written we would have written uh, uh, lambda a del z bar lambda a. Then this is the action we would have written in flat flat space without uh, without any gauge field, and this del z bar there would have just been the usual z bar there. Now we've got a background A field, this has to be replaced by the following. By the object, uh, del, where this object is replaced by dz bar, okay, minus i a a b mu of x, dz bar of x, acting on lambda, and then here there's a delta a b acting on lambda. I should use the interpretation, some of this you should be off and not come down here. It's all flat. Okay, so this is my claim. Now I'm going to test that. First, please clear what it is. Is this clear? So I have del z bar acting on, uh, on lambda a. Okay? So, let me write an equation. I'm saying dz bar of lambda, the whole thing a, is equal to del z bar uh, delta ab minus i a mu um, a mu a b del z bar x mu acting on lambda. I'm saying that this is the replacement we need to make in the action if we want to learn the background of some uh, some heat. Okay. Now, is this reasonable? What is the principle that governs this relation? The principle is gauge. Okay? We want our action to be invariant under we want our action to be invariant under lambda a goes to um, well uh, lambda a goes to uh, i omega okay, i omega a b lambda b, but this thing is a function of x. Okay, but lambda goes to lambda x, so delta lambda x. This and delta a mu a b. Um, right, is it equal to, and some plus minus i is which we fix soon, i del mu omega a b plus uh, with some with some signs that we fix as we go down, omega commutator a regarded as commutator as matrix commutator. Okay, we say in this case, parts of it in this commutator. Okay. Now, um, uh, now you see now you see that uh, under this um, uh, under this derivative we have invariance into this this gauge this gauge transformation. What is the point? The point 
logic is that uh, under such a transformation, this derivative would not be invariant. The ordinary derivative would not be invariant because this transformation, omega id is a function of x, x is a function of sigma, and therefore omega id is a function of sigma. Is this clear? So this is some sort of SO32 rotation. So think of it from the point of view of the world sheet. On the world sheet, we've got these 32 fermions. We're performing an SO32 rotation, but one that depends on where you are on the world sheet coordinates. Why does it depend on where you are on the world sheet coordinates? It depends on the, where you are on the world sheet coordinates. Because, because this omega a depends on x, and x depends on where you are on the world sheet coordinates. Okay? So, this ordinary derivative under such a transformation changes. Okay? But it changes in precisely the way that is cancelled by this shift in A, if you plug it in here, uh, and this, this, this del z bar of x mu uh, comes about because the change as a function of omega is the variation of A mu, I mean it's the variation of, of this omega because of, the, because of the variation in x. Do you understand what I mean? This is like effectively like a gauge transformation parameter is making this SO32 global on the world sheet. Uh, sorry, local on the world sheet. But the local transformation, its variation involves a derivative of x. Because if x was not varying on the world sheet, this, this transformation would, would truly be would truly be global. Is this clear? Now it's a matter of just algebra to check that under such combined transformation to the right with the right signs, this thing genuinely is Okay, we'll leave that algebra. Okay. So it's basically the same algebra that allows you to check that a covariant derivative A is not in one, it's covariant. Uh, you don't want this to be invariant, you want to transform by rotation, by uh, the omega rotation. And that will be cancelled by the omega rotation of, of the other. So we've got lambda, lambda a del z bar lambda a. So this whole thing will transform covariantly, will transform by being rotated, and then that will be cancelled by the rotation of the other. And this is the usual story. Okay? Um, so this kind of covariant derivative will often appear on the on the word sheet of the screen. Okay? Uh, we, we will have some gauge field. And then that will couple, will become an effective gauge field on the world volume of the string by coupling with some derivative of x. Is this clear? Okay. So the main point that we've, we've understood so far is that uh, we've got, we, we can, and in general, we'll write down a classical action on the world, on the world sheet of the string. That is, classically invariant under the under gauge now, there's an interesting question. And the interesting question is, is this also quantum mechanically invariant? The first thing the answer is not obviously yes, because these fermions are tiny. In fact, the answer is obviously no, because the fermions are tiny. And we have worked out in the previous lecture, in fact, for the case of the U1 theory, it's easily identified as two. Uh, that is the quadratic orbital uh, the, uh, the UN theory. The quadratic makes no difference. It's the same calculation between this and the Okay? We've worked out how the action of a bunch of chiral fermions on the world sheet changes. Okay? We've worked out how it changes under a, look, uh, uh, under a change in the background gauge field that couples to a local, a local rotation of these fermions. Okay? In the language that we used in the last class, we were using the language of current algebras. Okay? We, were, we were saying, suppose there was a current that, was, that had the form, but okay, last class we had just jz, that was jz0, so was like some number, z squared. Okay? But this language is appropriate to what we have here, because remember what our our JZ was. Uh, in our situation, the JZs are the SO32 calculations. So they are lambda A 
from there, then lambda b is it. Acting on lambda c of 0, lambda b of 0. In the simplest uh, situation, I just choose c and d is equal to a and b. So this plays the role of J.
that delta z of a, I'm not keeping track of factors, is proportional to kl times integral uh, d to z uh, lambda, now I'll generalize the non nonlinear case. So it was lambda a, in our case that would be omega a b. Okay, but then, then in general it was lambda a times del z bar times k times del z of a z bar. Uh, 
del x mu del phi. So this variation is precisely cancelled if there is a variation in B. Okay? Where the tra gauge transformation of B under the A gauge transformation is trace of omega x. You see? So what's the principle? The principle is that gauge time space transformations, well, uh, well, uh, space time sp uh, gauge transformations had better always be precise electric the theory. Where the theory is not, not consistent. Okay? But we find by explicit word sheet calculation that under a space time gauge transformation, the word sheet action is not, not invariant. That would be an inconsistency of the theory, if not cancelled by something else. There's only half. At first sight, it looks like it's an inconsistency, until you realize that the form of the variation can be precisely absorbed into a variation of another coupling of string theory, namely the BDU field, under these, tra these transformations. And the form of the BDU2 gauge transformation has to be a response. Delta B is equal to the trace of lambda times x. This is precisely the gauge transformation property that we had to assign the BDU field, that, that we did assign the BDU field uh, in uh, gauge supergravity. Okay? And this gives you the logic of that from the point of view of string theory. Now, the two things are left undone. I, okay, I'll, I'll just, because we should go on, I'll just leave you to, to fill in the gap. Basically, I've only taken this antisymmetric part of this. Uh, there's something else that I throw in the term where I have delta z acting on delta z. Ah, yeah. uh, all such things, either are zero or can be cancelled by, by the appropriate local terms. And you also get the uh, This, our analysis last class was quadratic. So, you would have to go beyond two point functions you would have to analyze three part functions. If you did that, you would also get it. But if, at the level at which we've done the analysis, you won't see it. Okay? So, I want this, this, this was just to explain to you from how the funny transformation of B is reflected in string theory. It's reflected in the fact that the gauge transformations in string theory would have been anomalous had it not been for the You think this function also transforms the other case, but why doesn't it transform the metric and the diagonal one? What? Uh, this particular term. Uh, yeah, which is a question that, you know, like, I mean, the statement that you made that the symmetric part is transferred. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it, basically, it's possible to cancel this guy out. So you don't need it. You see, uh, okay, you want to check that, that the symmetric card is cancelled by counter term? Uh, yes, what do you want to I think it's just an A ink that I've got. Let's, 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 uh, let's check that. So, um, how, how does that come? So, uh, suppose we have Uh, yeah, I'll take it. I'll take it. So we want the variation of something involving A to cancel something symmetric like right. So what about uh, what about A new? So we 
need an x already in the game. Uh, oh yeah, it, it has to be something like a more x. Uh, we need some derivatives. Um, Let, let, let me let me just first work out what this is in there. Okay, that's the answer. Uh, this makes the answer. I know, I know. We need to get it. Yes. Uh, um. Uh, wait. Okay. So what's the variation? Um. So delta of okay, mu uh, is equal to uh b. That is equal to omega a b. Uh. Uh, times that Let's say I have for that. Which is which is uh, 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 now this is just the variation of uh, of, of uh, so what about a uh, a uh, oh sorry. Let, let's do the sum of the class. There is a local counter term. I figured it out last time, but I can't remember it. Okay, the sum of the counter term that cancels this. Uh, I'll, I'll tell you what it is the class. But th that's the reason you don't need to change the tension. Uh, okay, it's just we should waste time on the camera. Uh, Yeah. 
Right. So we should look at it from the point of view. Uh, we should look at it from the point of view of the uh, of the world sheet. Right. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So you see, suppose we just look at the effective the, the effective world sheet HP. Okay. The effective world sheet HP was del z plus a z is equal to del z x mu a mu, and the effective world sheet HP a z bar. Okay, was uh, equal to uh, del z bar x mu a mu. Now let's look at uh, a z a z. This is an effective word sheet now. Okay, let's so that from the, that is del z x mu del uh, z bar x mu times a mu mu. Okay. Now, uh, the variation of this, of this guy here, is uh, d mu, uh, d mu of omega, okay. and that is that. Okay, so it is the same counter term. If you remember in our analysis last class, we use the counter term to cancel things which with KL is equal to K, uh, KL equals KR. And it's that same counter term that works here from point of view. So you see the Q theta squared. Q theta Q theta. 
This object is del theta minus theta del z. And let's square it. So we get del theta minus theta del z. Okay. Now del theta squared is zero. Because del theta means remove a theta. And del theta by definition acts on a constant to give you zero. So initially you had only zero or one theta. You have zero theta, del theta squared up is zero. You have one theta, it's zero because remove one del theta. Oh. So that's zero. And theta squared is zero. So what remains is del theta acting on this guy. So we get minus del z from this. Okay? Uh, and then this del theta goes through the theta. Okay? So we get plus theta del theta uh, del z. Okay? And then we got this guy, which is minus theta del z del theta. Now del z and del theta come into theta. So these two guys, yes. So we find the few theta squared it is equal to density. Very similarly, well, in this case minus minus density. Minus density. Very similarly, we find that d theta squared is equal to density. The same kind of that. However, the anti commutator of Q theta with D theta, so Q theta D theta plus D theta Q theta, this is it's just C. Um, this works because you get two terms, uh, you get two terms of this, this sort which is with opposite sign which checks. I'll ask you to check it. Put one plus here, and then do the same algebra with reverse order, and you can see. Okay, so that's the main importance of this d theta operator. This d theta operator in simple space commutes with simple symmetry. Now, why is it important that it commutes with simple symmetry? It is, it's important that it commutes with simple symmetry because if you take d theta and act on some operator that transforms in some reasonable way on the simple symmetry, that combination d theta and it also transforms in the same reasonable way on the simple symmetry. So, using d theta, you can build simple symmetry. Uh, like on Jews, uh, this can be simple symmetry theories. Yeah. So this d theta is a very important object uh, in the game. So the object is the derivative that always appears in super symmetry. Now, we are interested not just in super symmetric we are interested in super conformal. Okay. Now, conformal is very a geometric representation. As the set of all maps, as the set of all maps from z, from z, z bar to z, z bar, that left dz the map dz up to itself up to some fact. Okay? The supersymmetric derivative that plays the same that will play the same role as dz, because it will, it will appear in the graph, is d theta. In fact, it squares dz. So we're going to define superconformal transformations as maps such that d theta maps to uh, some something that it's in. Okay? So, we're looking for theta is equal to theta of z theta z bar theta bar. Theta bar is equal to theta bar of z theta z bar theta bar. Z is equal to z of z theta z bar theta bar. And z bar is equal, you know, so let me call these primes. Z bar prime of z theta z z bar theta bar. We're looking, we're looking for the most general such coordinate change that maps d theta to a multiple of itself. So how, 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 how do we how do we find such things? Well, uh, let's see how d theta transforms. So d theta transforms as follows. It transforms according to the chase as you can see. Okay, so it transforms as d theta prime by, by uh, d theta prime 
d theta prime.
the first thing that needs to be true is that these two coefficients must vanish. Because then theta prime is some linear combination of these two things. Okay? So it must be that V theta of theta bar is equal to zero, and V theta of Z bar is that must be true. Okay? But we've already seen that d theta, d theta bar squared is del z. And so that tells us that del z of theta bar is equal to zero. But if del z of theta bar is equal to zero, and d theta of theta bar is equal to zero, then del theta of theta bar is equal to zero. Because d theta is a linear combination of del theta and del z. Okay? So this tells us that theta bar is a function theta bar prime. Theta bar prime is equal to theta bar prime of theta bar and z bar. And similarly for z bar. Z bar prime is equal to z bar prime of theta bar. And of course the same things. For uh, uh, for the whole of it. Okay? So the first thing that we see is that if this condition is to be satisfied, left movers and right movers separate, as usual. So we can ignore the tabba and z bar. Okay? Yeah. So we just make everything holomorphic and here is. Fine. We still have to satisfy this condition. In order to satisfy this condition, uh, how do we proceed? Well, so let's say that um, uh, let now let's expand. Let's suppose that z prime is equal to let's use Bridges notation. So z prime is equal to f plus theta g h f of z, z plus theta g of z h. Is the most general possible answer. Z prime. And theta prime, we can use this presentation. Oh, well, and this is a very This is some Q. And theta prime is equal to G plus A. Uh, it's the coefficient of the 
constant is. Oh yes, let's, let's first explain the guy with the coefficient of the constant. The coefficient of the constant is this, so that's Q. And that's it for me. From this side, it's just Q. Like, is everything here? Yeah. So the coefficient of the constant from here is Q. And from here is what? Um, D theta acts on either this and then multiplies G or yeah, okay, sorry. This 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 thing acts on here. So D theta acts on H and then multiplies G. This is equal to H. Okay, so equation coefficient for the constants gives us Q is equal to H G. So I just replace Q here by H. Okay, now let's equate coefficients of, uh, of the theta. Um, okay, anyway, okay, let's do it. So the coefficient of the theta term is what? Um, this thing multiplying this thing from here. So theta delta prime, that's x prime. Coefficient of theta term is f prime. And from here, what do we get? We get. Uh, is equal to g prime g. That's this one is this. And where else do we get theta from? We get theta from this, multiplying this, hitting this. Plus h. H 
by this complex transformation. We'll see how the generation is to confirm the gravity is high. This is how fields transform under super conformal transformations, provided they don't also have some weight. Okay? Both are algebraic statements that you can check. Okay? Yeah. And so this gives you a sort of geometric notion of super Okay, let's move on. We are interested in... Okay. Uh, so I'm going to ask you to check these algebraic identity statements and therefore believe, once you check them, that this is the generator of this coordinate. You know, some of these two is the generator of that coordinate chain with some plus minus size and so on. Is this clear? Now let's move on. Now the next thing we had was in, in our study of super uh, the super conformal algebra was the notion of super conformal graph. Okay. I'm going to give you the geometric version of that notion. The, the geometric version of that notion is sort of interesting. Phi is a superconformal primary. So phi is a, the super field phi is a superconformal primary. A part of the superconformal transformations it goes to del theta. Okay, now under conformal under transformations generated by just the supersymmetry. Uh, it goes to del theta of eta to the power 2h. Okay. Times pi. Oh, wait. Okay. Uh, no, I'll, I'll give you the fin uh, finite version for you. The, the interface. Del Theta, theta pi to the power 2h and similar del theta bar of theta bar prime to the power 2h times phi prime of z prime theta prime and similarly in the bars.
So now phi prime is phi plus delta, right? Okay? And so what's the first order? So we get phi of theta theta is equal to 1 plus uh, This should have been d theta. Uh, so there was also a theta del z theta. Sorry. Eta is a function of z. So del theta theta is zero. But d z is not zero. So into phi plus, now there are two changes, there's delta phi, and then there's a change that is just plus um, uh, del z phi times theta eta plus uh, eta del theta. one more step of processing that I want to do here. Look at this combination. This combination has eta multiplying del theta phi and eta multiplying theta x del z. So this, but if I take the eta to the left of this, I get a minus. So this is equal to minus 2h theta del z theta phi plus eta times q theta. Suppose 
phi was equal to O plus theta psi. Okay? Now, uh, now, suppose I take O and psi are equal to or ordinary. O and psi are now ordinary fields. Okay. So, now if I act on this object with integral eta times uh, times uh, tf, or maybe what I call g form, on phi, that's the same thing as integral eta, so the sort of contour of integral, the usual thing, times tf on o plus theta, o plus theta psi. Okay? This, I should be able to equate to this object. Okay? And that will tell me uh, all about the OPs of uh, um, uh, of TF on O and TF on side. Okay? So independently I know I, I substitute phi is equal to O plus theta side again. Yeah? And uh, uh, these OPs will allow me to yeah. So uh, it tells me what the OPs of TF on uh, uh, an O and TF and psi should be. Okay? Yeah. Now, we will, we want that from the next class to process all the information. But in this, uh, let's immediately do it for a very, uh, very special, very simple special case, namely eta is equal constant. If it was a constant, then this term goes away. So all we left with is this term. Okay? Now, um, let's look at the variation of the scalar part. The scalar part there is just as eta and q theta on, on, on phi. Uh, the scalar part is the part that's independent of theta. Uh, q theta includes the d theta, which acts on psi. So the variation here is delta O is equal to minus psi, minus eta psi. So under constant eta, delta O is equal to minus eta psi for this one. Right? Okay. But now if we look at eta is equal to constant and we expand the tf in the usual way. So we've got um, a constant and then we have tf is equal to um, g m divided by z to the power m plus 3 halves. Why 3 halves? Because the weight of TF is 3 Okay? Uh, the weight of TF, uh, right. Uh, on phi, you see we want, the, we want the pole part here. Yeah? But the pole part comes only when n is equal to minus half. To make this 1%. Okay? So that gives you the formula that g minus half on O is equal to minus psi. Okay? Now we can, this is just one piece of an infinite amount of data that you get by equating this object and this expression, and we'll analyze all that in the next class, just completeness. But actually, for the purposes of superficial creative theory, the, re the whole reason I went through this lecture was to understand this thing. Okay? The g minus half acting on this, the scalar part, or the first part, it doesn't matter with the scalar part, on, on the uh, theta equals zero component of the super gives you the theta component of the super Okay? This is the thing that I want. I, I want just to explain to you uh, because we'll be using this statement uh, uh, many times. Okay. Um, I think we should probably stop here since the talk starts in two minutes. Um, uh, yeah, we should probably stop here since the talk starts in two minutes. Uh, in the next class, we we'll use the statement to uh, continue. Uh, I'm sorry about the heavy algebra of this class. Um, 
I toyed with the idea of telling you it can be shown that. But the formulas are sufficiently unintuitive that I didn't think Leonardo would be convinced. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, 